But first, before the fly-in on Saturday, we figured we'd test his wings. And we're off. Oh! You're up. Wow. As Mayor Robert Rickert closes out his time as mayor, he made it a point to recognize one program that's helping keep the community safe. Mayor Lester Miller asks that everyone get out on April 10th and clean up trash in their area to help make the city a cleaner place. City officials say they just want this to be a safe place for families to come out and play. Here in the Pine Needle community in Perry, you can take a walk down the street and see beautiful homes on one side of the neighborhood. But now the city of Perry is developing a 60 acre park on the other side. The legal blood alcohol content limit here in Georgia is 0 0.08. Now I have a solo cup here to show you guys. You can do this at home if you'd like. This lines on the solo cup show the average drink size and a can of beer that's 12 ounces is right here and it contains 5% of alcohol. Tonight we're here in Monroe County in Juliet where a mobile home overturned. Now I'll step out of the way so you can see the damage. Here at Amerson River Park, water levels are pretty high. Right now I'm standing on a staircase that would typically lead to the shore of the river. Good morning, Middle Georgia. I'm here in Houston County today at Rosier Park where we're seeing a line of voters already. I'll step out of the way and let you see the line behind me here. The wait time right now is about 15 minutes. We also spoke with State Representative Ron Stevens who in 2019 proposed creating a committee that would study how the state could create a railway to travel from Atlanta to here in Macon to Savannah. Today is National Donut Day and Krispy Kreme is offering customers two chances to get free donuts. I'm so excited, y'all. And in hopes of returning to normal, we're learning more details about the latest groups of Georgians who will soon be eligible to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. I'm Peyton Lewis. Coming up tonight on 41 NBC News at 11, during the pandemic, people have been hesitant to go to the hospital for medical emergencies. Two Monroe County teenagers are in custody. Monroe County Sheriff's Office investigators say they made terroristic threats toward a teacher. I just had to put this 41 Sky View on this morning because this is our view from the Coliseum Medical Center here in Macon and the sky just looks gorgeous this morning. It's actually my grandpa's favorite color. He calls it sky blue pink. Our high for today is going to be 67 degrees. We'll stay sunny and calm throughout the day and the winds will be to the east at five miles per hour. So a nice day to maybe eat outside. worth every hour that I put into it. So it's a joy to fly. Mike Beasley is one of many pilots flying into the Perry Houston County Airport this weekend for the 2021 Canard Fly-In. And he's flying in on a plane he built himself. About uh, just short of 19 years, I started in Germany when I was in the Air Force, uh, moved the project three times, and uh, I wouldn't even count the number of hours I have in it, but it was a labor of love. A fly-in allows pilots from everywhere to come to a particular airport, meet the community, and talk about their planes. Nancy Moore Wilson, the president of the local Experimental Aircraft Association, helped plan the fly-in and says it's a way for the community to come out and learn about airplanes. It's a family event, just, you know, we will have the planes here, just don't, um, don't touch them, but you can look at all of them, and the pilots will be here to be able to tell anybody all about their, what their planes are about. This is Beasley's second ever fly-in with his handmade plane that he calls Scooter. He's looking forward to getting to share his love of aviation with others. But first, before the fly-in on Saturday, we figured we'd test his wings. Perry House County traffic along easy 835 Mike Sierra, flight of two, departing runway 18 westbound, Perry House County. Oh, you're right, this thing does move. <laughs> and we're off. Oh! You're up. Wow. I would say it's not a hobby, it's a way of life. It's in your blood. If you love airplanes, uh, everything you do, you sleep, eat, breathe, airplanes and aviation. In Perry, really Peyton fun, Lewis, fun. 41. NBC News. Each time museum volunteer Dr. Keith Green walks into the Newberry Heritage Foundation Center, he's reminded of the path that was paved for him. To me, that, 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 that's what it really stands for, to be able to understand, to be proud of who I am. Green grew up in Hawkinsville and says people who look like him weren't always welcome. When we had the theater here in Pulaski County, here in Hawkinsville, um, African-Americans had to go upstairs to see the movie and the, and the whites were downstairs. 
And I can remember that as a kid uh, in 1975, 76, going to the movies. Ten years ago, Dr. Julius Johnson was inspired to create a space to remember this history and give a voice to these experiences. Johnson says he was motivated by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. to start the Newberry Foundation Museum. We cannot sit idly by witnessing history. We've got to get out of the stands and get on the playing field. Johnson says the museum continues Dr. King's legacy of togetherness by being a source to the community. We try to um, embrace those values in our food program. You know, we feed over 250 of our residents once a month, our literacy program, um, our uh, raising awareness around electoral politics, encouraging people to be involved. Green says getting to be a part of building a better future for his family and community reminds him of why Dr. King's work means so much. To be able to dream, um, to be able to know that regardless of, um, of what society says I should be, that I'm greater than what the perspective is of, of an African-American man. In Hawkinsville, Peyton Lewis, 41, NBC News.